and when it gets underway. For now, though, let's join. We are joined rather by Dr. Lillian Aber, who is going to be speaking to us about a range of issues, the controversial ones. We shall also be discussing the legacy of Jacob Olanya with regard to the women's movement and what he espoused during his time in life and as he held positions of power where he had the ability to influence decisions that were geared towards improving the livelihoods and of course uh, furthering the ambitions of uh, women in regard to equality and ultimately equity. Many thanks for joining us, Dr. Lillian Abar. Thank you very much. Uh, I insist. Did I get that right? Yes, you tried. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Many times the pronunciation of names yeah. is something that uh, an average broadcaster but you uh, tried. grapples with. At least with. I give you 80%. Ah, interesting. Yeah. And that's uh, very beautiful. Yeah. You look like you've spent the vigil. That's right. At uh, Parliament. Of course, uh, right. uh, many members of Parliament stayed overnight mm -hmm. to of course continue the condoling but most importantly to share stories about uh, Jacob Olanya. Just take us through briefly the events of uh, last evening up to this morning when uh, of course many of you left the precincts of parliament to go home and then of course uh, be ready to appear later at uh, the service that will be held at uh, Kololo. Well uh, members of parliament had a sitting yesterday mm. and uh, the sitting took quite a long time and it was a whole day discussion because everybody had something to say yeah, that's about right. delayed but not everybody could afford to speak mm. so we decided to stay with the body ah. that is the last time we are with him that's right so we decided to stay with him and mourn the african way mm. of keeping at the vigil and uh, of course we put in an element of christianity mm -hmm. where we had prayers we had uh, testimonies we had praises mm -hmm. as we celebrate his life so yes, I was there the whole night and mm. left around 6.30 to just go and get ready and come for the show. We were there with quite a number of, um, of, of members of parliament, including mm. the Deputy Prime Minister, Right Honorable Justice Lumumba, mm. who kept with us till morning. The okay. Commissioner, Honorable Foyo Chan was there, and quite a number, Honorable Kabanda, Honorable Linos, Honorable Nyamutoro. I can mention all the names mm. and uh, Honorable Lucy Akello for Amuro. So we, we, we had to stay there. It's an emotional it's moment. It's a very emotional moment, no we, doubt. It was good that we were there because yeah. that's our speaker. It's okay. the last time we could afford to stay with him. I would, love to, I would have loved, for example, to have uh, an opportunity to simply delve on uh, Jacob Olanya's legacy and not find ourselves in a position where we continue uh, the tirade of uh, scandalizing the man's legacy. We've seen a lot talked in light of uh, the burial budget, mm -hmm. uh, the money allocated to the various uh, segments or sections of what is going to happen, uh, tents, transport, uh, logistics, uh, food. There is something about the amount of money that was earmarked for the Acholi parliamentary group in light of that. First and foremost, I want to understand, did the Acholi parliamentary group make a request for this money or this money was allocated to the group and then you guys just got to learn about it? Well, um, the idea of the old budget for the barrio mm. was uh, the, the national committee uh, budget mm -hmm. and we came up with that budget looking at key areas. Most of the work was done by the technical team, technical team. and uh, they advised the political wing. So what is being termed as the request of money allocated to Acholi Parliamentary Group, mm -hmm. it's not for the MPs, mm -hmm. Acholi Parliamentary Group members. Mm -hmm. It's actually a, um, a request which was presented through the Acholi Parliamentary Group. I am a member of the NOC, mm -hmm. but this was just a representation of the plea that was coming from Omoro issues to do with clearing the um, you know the road and mm -hmm. organizing where the tents uh, w uh, will be you know set up and looking at the welfare of the people who are coming mm. because the state will look at just the d day of the burial okay. so after the burial we will the, the the family has to continue you know how uh, the african uh, way of mourning will be people keep on coming so mm -hmm. we, we we had a request that we need to support the father of the yes. deceased with some resources so that he can keep on you know taking care of of people so that money not even a penny 
will go to the APG. It was only represented through the APG. Mm. That money is not even transferred to the APG, actually parliamentary group. It goes direct to the cow of Omoro. So it was as a misperception and representation of that issue of the money. And uh, we had some um, issues here and there. Number one on the delays in the release of funds. We, mm. we, we saw the days were drawing closer, but the technical people were taking their time. You know, of course, the bureaucracies in the system. Mm -hmm. So we had an issue with that. And uh, we had budgeted for a, a different amount, and there was a, a cut in the budget. But again, our issues were like, since they've cut the budget, let's mm. focus, let's reallocate within the budget mm -hmm. on areas that we feel are more important to you know the, the barrier process so okay. but, but it so has been addressed all mm -hmm. these issues have been addressed money has been transferred and the process is going on the smoothly. process is going on smoothly yeah. before the process actually got uh, cleared and uh, uh, the money was uh, disbursed as yeah. required mm -hmm. the acholi parliamentary group ought to have come together pretty quickly and within the members themselves I don't want to throw judgment, but I would suppose, for example, that every member of the Acholi parliamentary group is capable of putting forth at least a million Uganda shillings. We did that. We actually did okay. that. As and that, that money would have been able, for example, to support the Mosei, as you said, as he's, you know, uh, entertaining the people who come to commiserate and condole with him. Why didn't you come clear on that? Is there any money that was... Um, the actually parliamentary group mm -hmm. contributed money up to the, the last time I checked, we were already in 40 something million. That's the members. We do not know about that. Yeah, yeah but you All do not we know, know about that because that money, that, greater budget. that money is going to be channeled to the education fund. This is a state funeral. Mm -hmm. There is no reason why the actually parliamentary group members would contribute to the state funeral because there's a budget mm. which is allocated to that. That would be double budgeting. Mm -hmm. So all we needed to do was to do the advocacy and ensure that money is delivered on time and money goes to the areas of focus, mm -hmm. of which the government had goodwill to do that. But there were some issues with uh, the technical people, that there were some delays that we felt as leaders that we it's not right to to have all these delays, we had quite a lot of time to prepare for the burial. But as I said earlier, that uh, these issues have been addressed, and mm -hmm. um, the government is working, you know, day and night to ensure that uh, everything is put in place. And okay. Inevitably, in seeking to have that uh, issue addressed once and for all, some members of parliament found themselves expressing themselves rather awkwardly when their emotions came to the fore about the fact that I remember seeing one member of parliament uh, claiming mm. that somebody wants to steal money and it's incumbent upon the Acholi parliamentary group to ensure that doesn't happen. Yeah. Why is it so? Who is going to steal money? I want to ask this question as innocently and perhaps in a very naive way. Do we know of a plan that could be clandestine to steal money that is supposed to go for catering for the expenses of Jacob Alanya's funeral? Well, at this stage, it's, uh, it's not ethical to mm -hmm. put allegations of stealing money. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we were trying to do as leaders mm -hmm. is to ensure that what is allocated goes to the right, the right. You know, item mm -hmm. on the, the budget. So um, these speculations, of course, people are inquisitive. We must appreciate that this is a very emotional time. and. Uh, Everybody can say anything about it. You can worry about anything to mm. do with the budget and how it's going to be spent. But I cannot sit here and say mm. I'm already suspicious money is going to be eaten. No. What I know is that this money is going to be audited. And this is a We've test had of... audits in Uganda and well, this uh, everything this, this is swept under the carpet. This is a test Do of... Do you intend to follow this up as a Choli parliamentary group? Can we put you on the spot? Definitely. We are going to Three follow that Three weeks from up. now, can I have you on the show with an audited report on that? I will not commit to come here with uh -huh. an audited report in three weeks. Uh -huh. But I can assure you, Sometime. we are watching. Mm -hmm. to end. We are going to follow up closely to see that that money which is allocated for a certain item goes right to that item. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't go, we'll be the first whistleblowers. Because we want to see 
government is, um, parliament is mandated with the powers to do appropriation. Mm -hmm. But we also have the mandate to follow up on how this money is going to be used. But Lillian Abe, as a member of parliament, representing the people of Kidkum, will pick interest and other committee members. And we're going to have a review. So we, we are going to be there attending yes, the barriers. I'm, I'm, we know I'm also very this interested. This money goes to this. <laughs> and also, if it's not, yeah, sure. of course you know human beings are funny. Mm -hmm. we, we might, me and you will be having a good will towards this, but someone might be there planning, how do I chop this, how do I eat this? It is about the test of honesty, the mm. test of the, the, the human you know, nature in you, the mm. corruption that the deceased talked about every time. It would be so nice if we try, all the service providers try to offer quality services, at least there to appreciate are. how much the deceased fought corruption in this country. There you are, a member of parliament, a very close acquaintance and associate to the uh, former, s the, the, the now deceased speaker, urging all stakeholders in this whole arrangement, from those who are going to be providing the services, to you who is going to be in uh, Lalogi County in Omoro District to mourn and of course uh, be present as uh, the remains of Jacob Alanya are interred in his uh, eternal abode where he will be forever. It speaks to a society that must come forth and do some soul searching. This yeah. offers an opportunity. The dead man, in the African way of thinking about the things, could be doing a lot more than he could ever done when he was alive. Do you see Ugandans uh, fostering unity, fostering a better way of doing things because Jacob Olanya's death and the handling of the whole process could have perhaps exposed some of the things that we need to work on in terms of uh, either governance and how we do a lot of these uh, uh, things in the country. Jacob Olanya as a person had this kind of character which was very distinctive. Mm. I can testify that I've never seen parliament more united than ever before. Like the way I am seeing Parliament United today. Yeah. We had a session yesterday and all the members could, you know, express is Jacob wanted sanity. Mm -hmm. Jacob wanted honesty. Jacob wanted in level of intellectual debate. Jacob wanted to see um, prosperity and delivering Ugandans from, you know, poverty, mm. getting them to a middle income stata status. Jacob wanted to you know, see that the government programs are channeled to the local man, local woman down there on the grassroots. Mm. So it's now incumbent upon us to emulate, to just walk the talk. He has done his part, he has done the talking, he has done the lectures, he has talked about corruption, he has talked about how the institutions no, In fact, I remember he was, very, he was very honest at one of the events uh, last year, uh, the anti-corruption walk. Yeah. He spoke very candidly and honestly. He's like, all of us are corrupt. Absolutely. In fact, he said, Mr. President, many of us are going to walk away from here. That yeah. was at Kololo. And we are going to do the same things we are talking against. So in a way, it's like he, was, uh, he validated the whole idea that the nation is corrupt. And leaders, including yourself, especially the young ones, have a particular huge burden on yourselves to come out as uh, clean, level-headed and the country is watching many of you had an opportunity over this whole issue to demonstrate that but some of you chose to show the uglier aspect of uh, the clamor for money and stuff like that i had you in particular going after the technocrats and yeah. what they are doing yeah put us through that what are the technocrats doing right now that seems to well my issues with you. My, my issues um, was basically about the delays, the, the bureaucracy. Delays. Ah, bureaucracy. Because I really feel if you are a technocrat in charge mm. of something, yeah. you must also address issues according to the situation mm. prevailing. You, ca you have to try and find a way and be creative to move these things faster. But also how you present and respond mm. to, to people, very important. You, you, you sitting in that office because of the people. Because of the people. So you must know how to respond to this person who will get up and walk to your office and say, I need your help. Give the help because you must be patriotic. We must serve the country. Mm. So our um, grievances was about the delays and the, 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 misallo the reallocation that we mm. needed to be done, which has been sorted out anyway. Okay. But um, We hope it is sorted out for good. 
and that nothing scandalous will come out. Yes, the big the administration, the, the, the administration, the right honourable prime minister uh, intervened, the mm. vice president intervened, intervened, and the things were handled on time. So okay, allow me transition no uh, from uh, discussing the scandalous aspects of uh, the gentleman's uh, send off to the legacy of uh, Jacob Alanya regarding women. On the show on Wednesday morning at NTV, we do delve into aspects women from uh, the movement that is ensuring that uh, the advancement of uh, equality and equity is actually achieved to mm -hmm. simply showcasing the stories of women, who is doing what, what is uh, transforming which particular parts of Uganda as pushed and uh, advocated for by women. In 2019, Jacob Olanya was speaking at a United Nations Women's Engagement and he said that increasingly there is empowerment for women. Mm. There is also need to ensure that the boy child is prepared for the empowered woman. I do not know whether there is any specific aspects that you may be aware of that I am not, no doubt, I'm sure there is, that made Olanya stand out as an advocate of women's rights and a critical pillar in pushing for the advancement of the women's movement. Right Honorable Jacob Olanya was a supporter of the women mm. movement. We have uh, Ohopa in, in Parliament. Ohopa, what's that? Yes, that Uganda is the... Uganda Women's Parliament Parliamentary Association. Association. Women's yes. Parliamentarians Association. Exactly. Yeah. And he was a member. Right Wait a minute. Honorable, yes. Women Parliamentarians Association. Absolutely. Why would Jacob Olanya be a member? We have men who Should have are, been a patron. We have men who are members of Okay, Europa. interesting. And uh, they, are, they subscribe to that association, they support the association, and they, we do everything together with, mm. with, with men. When we talk about the women movement and uh, women activism and support for the women, it's mm. not about the women uh, speaking their own story mm. or advocating for themselves. We need a two-way approach. We need men on board. Yeah. Jacob, I know Jacob for being... I knew Jacob for being someone who supported everything to do with the women. Mm. He was so patient about women. It, in, the f in the sense that even if a woman would annoy him, mm. it would be like, because you're a woman, I will let it go. Okay. And I will, I will, I will just, but if you were a man, we were going to take, uh, we were going to take this thing head on. Wasn't that so selective application of authority and... No, it's recognizing the women gender mm. and uh, being supportive uh, How do you mean? That. You bring in a very contentious aspect where women must or other people must be seen to treat women in certain circumstances with a little bit of uh, a lighter touch. Are women allowed to get away with it because they're simply women? You see, if you look at a woman in terms of the physical perspective, mm. definitely the, your physique is more stronger than the physique of a woman. No doubt. But uh, if, if you're looking at the capacity of a woman, a woman can do anything mm -hmm. that you, man, you men can do if you give them support. Mm. So the advocacy that Jacob Olanya focused on mm. was also based on resources. It would keep on re-echoing everywhere. I, I was privileged to attend at least quite a number of his engagements and mm. the public lectures. And he would continue telling you, if you want the economy of this country to, 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 to you know, grow very fast, then let's, champ, let's channel money mm. towards interventions that are women-led. These were his statements. And I, I would remember whenever anybody brings anything to do with the girl child on the floor of parliament, mm. you'd see how he's passionately talking about it. Mm. Jacob himself supported quite a number of young girls. If you look at the children that Jacob was paying in school, mm. supporting at school, the majority are girl children. Uh, in fact, uh, yeah, give us a children. little bit more detail on that, the Education Trust Fund later, but uh, just finish that point, we shall of course tackle. Yeah, so I, I knew Jacob for uh, being a woman activist. Mm. I knew him for being very supportive about anything to do with women. Even in his own constituency, he supported quite a number of groups within uh, Omoro where he was representing as a member of parliament. Mm. So for us, the women, uh, we feel we have lost a partner. 
and we need many of the Jacobs to come on board. Mm. It's not about competition between women versus men or this, no. It's okay. about creating a fair table for women to you know, present their issues mm. and understanding each other. And when we talk about focusing on girl child and leaving out the boy child, I also believe that we need a two-way support. Mm. We, and we don't focus only on the, on, the, on the women or on the ladies. For example, when we, we, we were supposed to have um, something to do with a way of helping out these girls who got pregnant mm. during the COVID time, these are some of the things it was discussing with the women um, leadership in parliament. But, mm. well, God has okay. taken him and we could not bring that to reality. Yeah, no doubt. But we, we really salute him. Let's, just, the let's just get the feel of the man when it came to uh, what he thought or what he espoused in terms of uh, issues uh, concerning women. I'll just uh, read you and uh, the audience a quote here was he was speaking at one of the engagements he was invited at how do we translate that is the agendas into mm -hmm. practical things i am quoting the uh, late honorable right honorable speaker i want impactful discussions about things that affect women actions we can take we should stop measuring things on the basis of how much money we have allocated but rather we must do output accountability what is the value what impact has been made he goes on to say i want us to assess progress in real terms these are the shifts i want to hear come to me with pragmatic things what we need to do to transform women in all this women empowerment we want to know what works what counts and how we should make our work count for these people. This is very poignant when it comes to practical things and how the people who push or the protagonists in the women's uh, movement come forth to be able to... I think his uh, modus operandi, the way he did his things, was don't come and whine about it. Don't come and give us uh, this very flowery, I need practical means how we can go from one point to the other. Is there a fund, of course, away from the education fund that covers for just about even the boys. In Omoro, in northern Uganda, the rural women, what are the stories being told? What is the impactful intervention that he had? Some of us might not have an opportunity to know exactly what is going on and perhaps uh, miss out on uh, the idea that he actually was at the front of uh, this particular campaign. Do you know of any in Omoro district that he pushed really hard? You know, when you talk about issues of women, you, you, you start, you don't look at it at the point of only representation. Like we now have um, women mm. MPs in parliament and that is it. We have to look at it at all perspective. There is representation, which Uganda has really done quite well, mm. having women, women representatives in parliament. Mm. That's quite a very big milestone. Okay. But the, the, the biggest deal is in terms of budgeting. Mm. How much are we allocating to supporting women? Because we need to look at financing, mm. access to finances for the projects that women are doing. Okay. You can, I, I can assure you, even in Kirkum district where mm. I come from, mm. the projects that have been channeled to women have at least registered success to okay. a bigger percentage. Yeah. So I know I, I know what Jacob used to do in his constituency. All right. He would, he would pick his own money mm -hmm. and support, support women uh, groups. And these women groups in small savings. We shall would, continue that. Uh, I'll allow you to finish that point. We have uh, a development in our live coverage of uh, everything around the send off of uh, Jacob Olanya. We now go to Jackson Onyango, who is in Omoro, as, of course, uh, preparations for receiving of uh, the body of uh, the deceased uh, right on. Honorable Jacob Alanya, uh, gate underway. Jackson Onyango, what is the latest? To you live actually from Gulu City. We shall be heading to Omoro uh, in a few minutes from now, uh, where of course we shall be covering what is happening there in terms of the preparations and the readiness to receive the body of the former speaker of the 11th parliament. That is Honorable Jacob Olanya, who hailed from Omoro. Omoro is one of the districts that was carved out of Gulu, just like Amur district. 
And so, of course, expectations earlier on would have been that maybe the body would have gone through Kulu, but it seems uh, to the organizers it was just best for him to be taken straight to his constituency. And according to the information that we obtained yesterday, uh, the chopper that will airlift the body of the former Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya, will land at his former primary school, that is Lalogi Primary School. And this, uh, this they say, is for strategic reasons uh, in that they aim to inspire other generations and parents that today it does not matter which school you take your child to, but if there is commitment on the part of the teachers, the parents, the, 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 the child can actually turn to be a very important person. The reason to this is that if you go to that particular primary school, Lalogi, uh, you can, I cannot say it is a first world school. We reached there a few days ago. The structures are few, some of them dilapidated, and actually even the staff members did not have an administration block or office. They up operated from outside. And so that's the kind of picture you have in that area that maybe calls uh, from this also maybe the educationist and the government generally will uh, some time to come see to it that the school is improved. Uh, according to what the program we have obtained, the body is expected to arrive here at about three to four. However, there will be a delegation led by the Speaker of Parliament. Uh, we are told also the Chief Justice, the Deputy Speaker Thomas Tayewa, will be the first to arrive here on a separate chopper. And then minutes later, uh, the body of the disease will also be arriving here. According to the information that we have gathered, uh, there will be a group of people, a huge uh, gathering that will be there waiting uh, to receive the body. And there will be a procession from Lalogi Primary School, which is about uh, five kilometers from Ayom Lounge Village, where he will be laid to rest on Friday. So that will be about a five-kilometer walk to, to the venue. Uh, 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 the chairperson of Omoro District, that is Douglas Okello, yesterday told us generally 75% of the works on ground had already been prepared. That is, if you talk in terms of paving the road, the compound had been widened enough. Initially, when we came here, just uh, a day when the announcement of the demise of the Honorable Jacob Olanya had been made, uh, part of the place was bushy, and even where the new structure that he was building is located, the compound had not been paved. But it is totally a different picture today as we speak. The area has been paved, the roads have been cleared, and even the nearby school, uh, uh, that is a jury primary school, where the the event on Friday will be held has been widened to provide for enough parking space. Although there was only one challenge that uh, the leadership here is worried about, that is to do with the seating capacity. According to them, they had planned for about 30,000 people, but there had been it had been indicated that only 10,000 seats would be provided, and therefore they were working around to see to it that the National Organizing Committee can possibly see to it that at least the 30,000 seats, or about 25,000 seats, are provided to cater for the population to avoid the risk of people climbing trees, you know, things like that. So that's what is happening this side, and of course we shall be updating our viewers on each and everything that takes place this side. Back to you, Chris. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jackson Onyango, reporting live there from Nguru uh, City, ahead of uh, the expected, uh, of course, uh, reception of uh, the body of the fallen uh, Speaker of Parliament, uh, Right Honorable Jacob Olanya. The state of Finro shall be getting underway anytime soon at the Kololo ceremonial grounds, after which we are told the body will be flown by chopper to Gulu, and of course uh, it will make its way from uh, Lalogi Primary School onto the journey, very last journey indeed uh, for the erstwhile politician as he prepares, as they, as the country prepares to send him off uh, officially, and of course. Uh,
eternally to his uh, board. We now return to studio. And of course, uh, we were speaking to the uh, a member of the Acholi Parliamentary Group. She's also women representative for Kitagum, uh, Dr. Uh, Lillian Aber. We were talking about uh, the legacy of uh, Jacob Alanya with regard to the women's uh, movement and everything that uh, he was able to help influence, especially given his position, to achieve uh, the kind of uh, objectives that the movement uh, wants uh, to achieve. But by and large, I think the support system for women within the country is uh, something that is commendable as far as uh, the government, uh, the government departments, uh, ministries, and all these other players and uh, sector, uh, or other sectoral players. As a member of parliament and a woman at that, there is a lot of challenges in trying to push some of the things. We do see many women reaching parliament and then somehow the, that fire fizzles out in terms of pushing for women's rights. The accusations of tokenism where the allure of money becomes the central driving factor to be able to, you know, find the best possible positions within the national resistance movement, make your way, stuff like that. Why is it so? Shouldn't we stay away from that and then uh, stay clear, steady first, and focused? Well, you need to inspire the young girls. If we talk about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't inspire them when you are positions. susceptible to some of these small, small uh, tricks. One thing I want to tell you and assure the viewers is that women, this women, the creature called women, Mm. are real multitaskers. These guys, the people, we, we, what we do as women, mm. a woman MP, for example, I am coming from, I'm from Kidgum, yep. I represent Kidgum. Um, I have three constituencies. Mm. I have Chua West, I have Chua East, I have Kidgum Municipality. Mm. But I am meant to deal with issues in the whole entire district. Yep. But, uh, a male representing one constituency just has to deal with one constituency. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy for these women who come to parliament, especially the women MPs. Mm. They really have a lot of challenges because they need to juggle all this. But remember, a woman is a wife to somebody. Mm -hmm. A woman leader is a mother to somebody. A woman leader has got career to push. Mm -hmm. Some of them are back in school. They have to push, like continue with their education. But they also need to balance the political, you know, representation. Mm. They need to go for barriers. They need to, you know, <laughs> deliberate in the house. Sure. All this is on one woman. Very but lastly. we still yeah. try to mm -hmm. juggle on okay. these issues. All right. So women are, are focused. They, mm -hmm. they try their best. And I see how we, we, we try to support each other. Of course, there are challenges. Sometimes mm -hmm. we are dragged down. And of course, in politics, there's still no leveled ground for us. There mm -hmm. are a lot of you know, um, blackmail, a lot of uh, propaganda on a woman. So y y we try to juggle that, but one thing I know is when a woman is determined of her leadership, mm. that woman will do their best. Lastly, debate on the floor of parliament. It is something uh, Jacob Balanya wanted to improve, especially research, so that when the member of parliament comes to speak, you speak with clear yeah. thought patterns, but most importantly, hard facts. The women must stand up and speak in yeah. terms of uh, going out there and doing the research. I don't know whether the support system for HMP is sufficient enough to allow for this kind of research to be undertaken. What are you going to change in order to ensure that at least when the man is uh, in, the, in his afterlife right now can always say, I think the things I wanted to improve are yeah. improving. First of all, when we are debating on the floor of parliament, mm -hmm. and I want to say this out there, oh, sure. that you are debating not just as a woman mm -hmm. but as a representative of the people so no woman should feel like i just i am just a woman so i cannot speak like so and so sure. it's a level ground but the issue of quality of debate is a personal responsibility mm -hmm. you must read if you don't read if you don't research there is no way you will speak sense mm. on the floor of parliament. No and you will not speak something that has got reference or has got evidence. Jacob Olanya emphasized every day that he who has got 
um, no information, has no right to speak. No right so to it speak. kept on inspiring <laughs> us that you must really come on the floor of parliament, not just to jump and say I must point emphasize, of order and all that. I must emphasize that even the ignorant have a right to be heard. Yes, I would not uh, call mm -hmm. someone ignorant until probably the issue that the person is, okay. is, is bringing on, on the floor has got no reference or has mm. no backup. All right, but, thank uh, you. Women yeah. are doing well in this mm -hmm. country. Mm. The leaders who are women have proven themselves to be very good, perfect leaders. No doubt and about that. And I still that. have very high hopes in women offering leadership in highest position. Thank you day. very much, uh, Dr. Lydian Abar, the Kitogum Women Representative for the insights and the perspective. But of course, uh, on the program this morning, the debate and talk about women's issues continues. We shall be hearing from uh, experts on maternal health and uh, nutrition. These are